super stack. And usually for upper layers, we have a well-defined API for sending data, and receiving data, of course, and uh, for configuring the, the network stack. This is SOC API, a native API. And usually below the network stack, uh, we have different requirements uh, of, um, in order to, to get access to a specific uh, link layer. And basically each network stack implements a southbound API uh, that basically gives access to different parts of the OC layer, like direct access to a Mac layer, direct access to a file layer, or even the radio. So for instance, here are just like two examples of, uh, of lower layers we might be interested. Of course, there are more like LoRaWAN or uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, et cetera. So basically the scope of this rework is always in this part uh, below the southbound API, everything where it's in blue here. So uh, regarding this, Southbound API requirements of different uh, network stack. Uh, for instance, uh, I mean, here I put like some some network stack we currently have in Riot. For instance, uh, uh, for OpenThread, uh, we require access to a file layer. This is a full uh, link layer frame, physical service data unit. Uh, for that, we might need, for instance, a SAPMAC 15.4 file with steroids like uh, sending with retransmission or CSMA uh, and handling. Uh, yeah, for instance, uh, what kind of access to channel. Uh, for our network stack, like OpenDoll USN, we require direct access to the transceiver. So we need an interface to access there directly. Put it here as 15 for transceiver. GNRC, for instance, uh, requires access to a uh, link layer. Basically, GNRC gives a full network, uh, network layer frame, a Mac service data unit. For instance, there we could need a 15.4 Mac, an Ethernet Mac, LoRa Mac, and some others. Lightweight AP, for instance, also requires a file layer, full uh, link layer frame, uh, like Ethernet file or 15.4 submap. So now let's back uh, to go, let's go back to the state of 15.4 on Riot. Uh, talking about 15.4 link layer, uh, we currently have no 15.4 Mac layer. We only have traces of uh, framing uh, of 15.4 uh, in GNRC Net if 15.4. So basically. Only one network stack as a direct implementation to, uh, to, to framing. Uh, this gives us some problems. For instance, we don't have uh, security. We don't have any kind of link layer encryption because we don't have a mag layer. Uh, we don't have uh, authentication, protection against uh, replay attacks. Uh, the problem is also not standard with common 15 or 4 devices. Uh, since we only have the framing, we don't have uh, these notions of uh, bank coordinators and stuff that are common uh, in 15 or 4. And uh, also, we miss a lot of low power friendly features. Uh, for instance, 1504 power has a lot of indirect uh, transmissions or slot mode, which could help to, to keep like a very low duty cycle and, of course, to optimize the, the, the battery life of uh, 1504 applications. Uh, regarding the state of the 1504 file we currently have on Riot, we are using NetDev with uh, each NetDev variant as a file layer. This, uh, as identified uh, the last years by members of the community, uh, has some problems. For instance, it's not well defined for each uh, network device type. For instance, for 15.4, uh, it's not defined who cares about our transmission, CSMICA. Also, uh, there are different file configurations uh, with newer 15.4 radios. We have new modulations and bands. This is not defined for every, uh, for, for every file layer. Uh, also, we have the problem that uh, the file layer, using NetDev as a file layer, it's uh, basically using a generic layer where the lower layer is already known. For instance, if we are in GNRC Net if 15.4, we already know it is a 15.4 file, but we still have an interface to, to check which kind of, uh, of file layer is it when we use NetDev. And this adds a more, more boilerplate code. Uh, it uses more RAM and also rules out certain optimizations. If we just have a generic layer there for accessing the file layer, uh, of, of course, we cannot uh, do uh, file layer specific stuff, and this uh, tends to add a little bit more more overhead. Uh, so the state of uh, the 154 radius in Riot, we all we also use NetDev with one of the NetDev variants. The problem with this is really generic. Usually, the semantics of 154 radius are well defined. Uh, in practice, we have NetDevs everywhere. Uh, also, different network uh, devices have different NetDevs, so uh, it's very hard to know which will be the behavior of the radio. 
Uh, also, we have a uh, heavy overload of some transceiver operations. For instance, uh, some network stacks require access to the frame buffer, just preload uh, frame buffer, and then transmit later. But basically, we have to overload, for instance, the send function, and then do some other internal operations in order to achieve this uh, this kind of transmission. And this also makes the API a little bit more complex. And uh, <coughs> also uh, regarding the bottom half processing, so the RQ of the events on the radio, NetDev currently uh, take care of this, but uh, there are some issues. For instance, uh, most implementations don't have a call tree defined for the event callback. Uh, for instance, uh, some implementations just call the event callback inside the receive function or send function. And this, uh, since the upper layer doesn't know what's the context of a, of a call, this could give us uh, some issues. For instance, here I put the uh, originally the LoRa1 uh, ISR stack overflow uh, because basically the upper layer expects uh, a specific uh, order of uh, execution, but we cannot ensure that because it's up to the implementation. Also, it makes strong assumption on how the RQ events should handle. It turns out a lot of radios can already resolve the kind of event or interrupt uh, service routine. Uh, for instance, the NRF radio just do that. Or there are some more radios like the Admel 215 that it's one ra uh, one device with two radios and basically having two IRQ functions where basically only one is needed. So basically uh, this assumption of one uh, net dev that handles the IRQ in some cases can be problematic. Also, we have a lot of code duplication between several network stack. Most network stack only care about the events that happen, but they don't care about who processes their Q events. So basically, we now have something that each network staff has to care about this, and we duplicate a lot of code. The other problem we have using NetDev as a radio interface is that basically we pull the whole file layer where only sub components are needed. Basically, we have to copy all the information about channel, uh, power, uh, and parameters, where it's usually handled by the upper layer. So in most cases, we have duplication of code there. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, as I said before, it's not well defined. For instance, yes, it's mute. Okay. So, oh, for instance, apologies. Yeah, no, no problem, no problem. So, for instance, uh, in a case of event callbacks, uh, we have different semantics for the net of event TX medium BC. Uh, this could mean the CCA failed. It could mean that CSMA failed, uh, but basically the upper layer has no idea what this means. Same thing with the net dev event CRC error. This could mean that, uh, I mean, in, in some cases we receive the packet and then trigger it. In some other cases we just uh, announce the CRC error was wrong. So basically the upper layer has no idea what to do about it and makes network stack integration hard and device dependent. And yeah, basically this is the point. Uh, we currently have something like a hardware dependent hull. It feels like all radios are equal, but some radios are more equal than others. Uh, for instance, um, when we just use uh, standard GNRC 15.4, uh, the quality of servers depends on the radio. For instance, some radios sense with uh, CSMA and retransmission, some other just sense a plain 15.4 uh, packet. And this gives us uh, poor quality of service, for instance, on CC2538 series and uh, Nordic radios and others. Also, it's not defined how, uh, for instance, how a radio should send. Some radios block, some others don't. So this gives us some differences. And of course, since it's not defined, uh, it's really hard to test. Uh, we sometimes don't know what to test if these interfaces are not defined. So, so far, there are two proposals for 15.04 uh, regarding the radio. Uh, there's a 15.04 radio hall which uh, had a community process that started in the last Riot Summit. Uh, there's an RDM, at least seven members of the Riot community contributed the requirements, design, and review. Uh, there's an implementation that got merged. Uh, and also we have a proposal for uh, 15.4 SubMac, which is this file that takes care of also of CSMA, CA, and retransmissions. There's an RFC, and there's also an implementation that's still under revision. Um, so, so yes. Uh, so let's start with the 15.04 radio hall. Basically, it's a lightweight API to provide uniform access to 15.04 compatible radios. Uh, it tries to address the community requirements we got from the RDM and from the last Red Summit. 
uh, we tried to make it fully asynchronous. This is of course low power friendly. Uh, in some cases, it can be helpful to have low memory footprint because we can organize the events in a way where, we, for instance, we can use just one stack to process the whole uh, radio events. Uh, also, it has well-defined access to optional hardware accelerations. This considers that some radios are more capable than other radios. So basically, the idea is to uh, indicate the upper layer which kind of features are there so the upper layer can make the best use of it. Uh, of course, it's implicit, but it's compatible with the requirements of current network stack. Uh, basically, this radio hub can be integrated into OpenDoll USN, GRC, and uh, or network stack. And tries to leave the physical information base and MAC information base to upper layers. So all this information about uh, TX power, channel, uh, some addresses, uh, this is usually handled by the upper layers. So basically, Radio Health tries not to keep any of these states. So let's compare the current architecture and the new proposed architecture. Basically, uh, now what we have is a TNRC NET 15.4, has to connect directly to NetDev, and basically, uh, the NetDev interface is responsible for implementing uh, the five plus uh, radio access. And of course, uh, since, for instance, we don't have a, a MAC layer here, it, the NetDev would require to implement all kind of uh, retransmission, CSMA, CA. Uh, so basically, leaves a lot of responsibility to, to the NetDev interface. Uh, and the new architecture, basically, the idea is that GRC NetE 1504. Uh, could directly talk to a MAC layer, 15 for MAC layer, uh, and this MAC layer, uh, this could in, uh, implicitly include the SAP MAC here, but basically the idea is that this one is the one that can talk to the to the radio hall, and then basically we can reuse a lot of code. Uh, same way for instance open all USN, now we're using NetDev or accessing there, but basically we simply uh, use this minimal API uh, and just connect open all you send to a radio hall. So a quick overview about the components of a radio hall. Uh, basically the upper layer can interact with the radio hall using uh, an interface called the radio operations, radio ops. And uh, there's also event notifications where the radio hall can notify the upper layer about a specific event. Uh, for instance, a packet was received, uh, the transmission start, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and basically, radio hall implements a device driver and just expose the hardware in the event and part uh, via the radio hall. And the important thing is like uh, some devices might require uh, additional processing of the IRQ uh, interrupt service, for instance, uh, most SPI radios, uh, we cannot call the um, we, we cannot call SPI functions on an interrupt service routine. So basically, we need to uh, check what kind of event happened there in threat context, and then we can uh, forward it to the event notification. And this is basically also optional, but it's out of the scope of the radio hall. This is up to the implementation of the network stack or the or the group. So a quick overview about radio ops. Uh, basically, uh, this radio operation exposes just common operations to control the 15.4 devices. Uh, some of these functions are somehow similar to the ones we have uh, in NetDev. So the receive mechanism, for instance, is quite similar. But basically, this kind of operations are like uh, setting the transceiver state, uh, for instance, going to uh, listen or receive mode. Uh, turning off the transceiver, etc. We can set the file configuration, a channel, TX power. Uh, also, for instance, the 15 to 4 bands, uh, we can natively load and then transmit a frame. So we don't need, for instance, uh, this uh, net of preloading mechanism. And we also have a way to check if uh, hardware capability is supported, which we currently don't have uh, in our current implementation of uh, most net devices. So basically, the upper layer can know if a uh, device supports frame retransmissions or not, if a device supports CSMACA, if the device uh, helps uh, with the uh, with the acknowledge uh, uh, handling, uh, etc. So basically, then the, the upper layer knows, for instance, that if a device doesn't support frame retransmissions, then the, we need to do software retransmission. Uh, this whole API of radio apps is implemented, uh, as I said before, it's uh, asynchronous and it's implemented using a request confirm pattern. Basically, all blocking operations are defined by requests and confirm functions. Uh, blocking operations, let's say, for instance, set the transceiver state, uh, transmit, uh, CCA, etc. And basically, the idea is that uh, the upper layer requests an operation. 
if the operation was successful, we can then use a, the confirm uh, the respective confirm function to indicate the upper layer if the request finished or not, if the request is still going on. Basically, the confirm function will return E again. When it's finished, it returns zero. And uh, the device may generate an event to indicate when to call the respective confirm uh, function. Uh, this is because not all devices support all kinds of events. For instance, there are some radios that tell the upper layer if uh, if the transition uh, the state transition finished. There are others that don't do that. There are some radios that indicate the upper layer if a CCA request finished. Some others don't do that. So basically, this is what we have. For instance, in the case of CCA, uh, the upper layer requests CCA. Let's say it was uh, successful. Then if the upper layer tries to call a confirm CCA and the CCA is still uh, going on, basically the, the function will return E again, so the upper layer knows that it didn't finish uh, with the CCA process. And of course, after CCA is done, then we can uh, call the confirm CCA and it tells the upper layer that this was finished. So basically, this allows us to use API with polling mode. Uh, so basically, we can simply pull uh, the confirm function until return zero, or just use interrupt. For instance, put a mutex, uh, and then probably the this interrupt will unlock the mutex, and then we, we can uh, simply call the, the confirm function. So this is important because not all radios, for instance, implement uh, some interrupts like CCA, uh, set transistor state. Also, not all radios support uh, events like the TX Dome event. So basically, this at least give a chance to to unify uh, uh, basically the sending a CCA process. So we also have an event notification system similar to to NetDev. Basically, this event notification is just a callback that informs the upper layer about a specific event, TX Dome, CCA, etc. Uh, for certain radios, this can occur in uh, interrupt uh, context. Uh, for instance, uh, as I said before, most Nordic radios can directly tell if uh, a packet was uh, received or if the transmission finished. So basically, we don't have the overhead of copying the state and then uh, asking an IRQ handler to uh, check what happened. So basically, this saves uh, some RAM in, in this kind of devices. Uh, also, uh, this explicitly leaves the IRQ processing out of the scope of a radio hall. And it's up to the implementer of the bootstrap code, for instance, out to init or a specific implementation of the of the network stack. Uh, so implementation status, uh, the API was merged, as said before. Uh, currently, we have support for the CC2538 and NRF uh, uh, radius in master. Uh, there is a tracker uh, in order to track the, the port of all, the, all these radios. We really need help. There are, I think, seven or eight radios now. And uh, there are two implemented. There's a half uh, implementation of the uh, Admiral radio. Uh, but yeah, basically, it would be nice to, to have some help here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about memory footprint. Um, yeah, so basically, these are results comparing uh, current master NetDev implementation of these uh, drivers and the radio health implementation. It's just an estimation because, uh, for instance, uh, the NetDev version of the Nordic radio doesn't implement all CCA variants, power functions, and uh, and, and, and some of some other functions. Uh, also, uh, there's a draft of the Admiral radio driver, but for instance, the radio help version does include the subjectors variants, which I suspect they're not compiled for these radios. Uh, the two through one, for instance, doesn't implement, uh, doesn't have any kind of subjectors uh, capabilities. So, right, they're not called, but they were stripped. So, there could be a difference. But here, for instance, we can see that still, uh, since uh, the scope is limited of these kind of functions, uh, the RAM consumption uh, tends to shrink a little bit. Also, since we don't have to uh, maintain the physical information base or MAC information base, we also see that in most radios, uh, the, the RAM usage also tends to, tends to drop. And here's an important comment. Uh, basically, it was decided for the radio hall uh, or the radio hall specifically to use function pointers instead of switch cases, which is what we have in, in net now. Uh, basically, after testing a lot and reading uh, documents uh, on the internet, uh, it seems in best case switch cases might be implemented as a jump table by the compiler, but only under certain conditions. For instance, they are ordered 
and if they're only function calls. But as soon as we have cases where we don't have all net ops implemented, for instance, or we have uh, some logic inside the labels, uh, in most cases, the resulting code size and execution time also might increase. Uh, I did some experiments here with the code size, and basically, I consistently got uh, 12 bytes of different each time I moved a function pointer to a switch variant, as we do it now in NetApp. Uh, so, uh, of course, this is not 100% uh, close, and since we have interface, uh, since we have wrappers for functions, we could always think about switch case, but basically, uh, I got better results with function, function pointers. And also, it turns out to be uh, easier to maintain because then we can simply define an API for a given operation. And then, uh, as soon as the implementation reaches the API, then we know we are somehow done. So, enough for the radio call. Now, let's talk a little bit about the uh, fifth and fourth submac. Uh, basically, it's a common layer that unifies uh, common 15.4 lower Mac operations. Uh, so basically, this provides hardware independent uh, access to Fender for compliant data transmissions. For instance, this layer takes care of CSMACA, frame retransmissions. Uh, and basically, this layer tries to fill the gaps in case a radio doesn't support a specific hardware acceleration. Uh, of course, if a radio supports frame retransmission, then the submac will just send and wait for the event that notifies what happens with the, with the retransmission. Otherwise, it will try to trigger uh, software frame retransmission. So basically, the upper layer only sees uh, a send function that always handles retransmission and CSMA. It also stores uh, the um, physical information base, GX channel, uh, power, and some uh, Mac information base attributes like a CSMA safe parent, for instance. The API of the sub Mac uh, is really simple. Basically, we can set uh, physical service data unit frames. Uh, this is a full link layer frame with CSMA and possibly retransmission. So basically, this is like if all uh, radios would behave as an admiral radio, which has all kind of uh, of high resolutions. Uh, also has some function for set the PIV parameters, uh, channel, page, uh, configurations. And uh, the thing is, all hardware independent validations are done here and not in the radios. So for instance, uh, we already know by the standard that the subject hertz radio defines the, for instance, from channel 0 to 10, and then from channel 11 to 26 is usually for a 2.5 gigahertz radio. So these kind of validations are here, and we don't have to just copy every time uh, we implement a new driver, uh, this kind of validation. Also, you have function to set max states. Uh, in a given, uh, for instance, when we do a transmission, the transceiver switch between different states because, uh, for instance, have to receive acknowledge. Uh, so basically, the actual state of the Phi is not necessarily the same state of the Mac, but basically uh, this all allows to set the Mac states like uh, keep the radio always listening when possible, uh, turn off the radio, etc. And same as NetDev, uh, this little allocation of frames up to the network stack. Uh, so basically, uh, it always requires someone to pass either a static input buffer or dynamically allocate uh, the packet. So implementation status: there is a PR. Uh, still under revision. Uh, this uh, implementation also includes a net depth and the first some Mac transition layer to its migration. This basically implements a generic 15.4 net depth device with CSMACA and from retransmission. So basically, it's, as I said before, it's like taking the admin radio and uh, assuming that all radios behave the same. Uh, it has the net ups that make it fully compatible with the GRC open thread, uh, like WAP and, and some other network stacks. And uh, here I show some results. For instance, um, pinging between a CC radio and an Admiral radio. Uh, current master, usually we have a lot of, uh, especially when we have big, uh, big payloads and uh, six low power fragmentation. Usually with this configuration, we see a lot of packet losses. Uh, here I ping between the two radios using one kilobyte uh, payload, 117 with the second interval, and 1,000 packets. And um, what we have in master with direct transmission without any kind of uh, CSMA or, or frame retransmission, this is usually what we get. Uh, it's not uncommon to have up to 50% uh, of the packet losses. And uh, under the same conditions, when we enable submax, so basically enable frame retransmissions and CSMA, we get this kind of results. 
so basically, after testing between the Adler radio, Nordic, and, and CC radios, we somewhat, somehow get like similar results. So uh, here we can see that uh, having a layer that takes care of uh, perturbation can drastically improve uh, quality of service. Uh, yeah, there are some also challenges needs with this uh, with, with the submac. For instance, if we have an added layer there. Uh, I could simply change a little bit the bootstrap code of OpenStreet, and now it works out of the box with the uh, CC radio, for instance, uh, which was really hard to do before because this uh, OpenStreet was expecting someone to handle uh, uh, the frame pending bit, for instance, or some kind of retransmission. So uh, now, since we have a common layer now, uh, and we had an implementation for the admin radio of OpenStreet. Uh, basically, what we do now is simulate the same radio but with other radios, and it works out of the box. Uh, I didn't try with an Arctic radio, but it should also work. And I expect uh, this uh, net adoption of a sub to also make lightweight AP and other stuff to work too, because in theory, it has all net ops that should be required for that. Okay, so that's uh, all I can say about the, um, about the current state. The idea uh, then is. Received like some comments. So what do you think about it? Some questions, and then the idea is to like since we have the context is to try to take the this uh, how like what are the next steps uh, regarding the low layer uh, stack. So first, um, I don't know. Are there any comments? Question. Um, Jose, you, you might also want to check the chat. There was some discussion brought up by um, Hannes regarding um, the point you made about function pointers versus switch case. Um, the discussion was mostly um, if you're optimizing, uh, optimizing at, the, at the wrong point here and uh, because function pointers might make the code much less readable. And um, no, not might, uh, they do. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually also for debugging. Um, yeah. and it, of course, you can make whatever decision you want, but um, I notice it uh, myself with uh, in MPA TLS, where, like, depending on who is uh, who has what preferences, sometimes it's more function pointers and sometimes it's something else. But um, from like, if you want to do sort of save bytes. Uh, I think there are better ways to save uh, a few bytes than switching from case statements to switch case to uh, function pointers. Um, yeah, but, the thing but, that I, I yeah. think it's important to mention here is that uh, it's not just a random switch cases, uh, but basically we were defining uh, primitive operations with, uh, with switch. So basically, for instance, uh, on net, uh, we have a huge list of net up on the set and get functions. And sometimes we already know which kind of operation we want to do. Like we simply want to set the channel. So basically, we know the semantics for that layer. And basically, every time we have to go uh, through a switch to check what operation we want to do now, we have to execute the operation. And then we usually copy the output to whatever uh, frame we pass there. We have some some casting logic there, and then we, we check it out. I think it's not only a switch case where we say, like, uh, okay, we, we want to switch case and we will just use function pointers. Basically, we are defining uh, the interface using uh, function pointers, which is the same thing that uh, Linux does for the lower layers, and uh, also Sapphire, I think, Embed does the same. I mean, of, of course, we still have switch yeah, cases. Um, but, but there's there's a reason why many of those uh, Operating systems and and software sets are so hard to maintain. Uh, have difficult security properties, uh, and and that's something. It's just something food for thought. I don't want to convince you to. Um, no, I, I think it's not. But what I think is more important is is the API design because I I see that uh, like all the time um, that everyone comes up with a new API and there's no. There's no attempt made to harmonize some APIs. And the consequence is that you then create this problem that if someone produces hardware, they have to they have to decide like what upper um, level API do I want to um, implement this to us? And the consequence is they will pick something and, and maybe they even create their own because there's they, they say uh, in frustration, oh there's so much, uh, so it doesn't make sense, I just do my own. 
like even some silicon vendors uh, have multiple APIs because their customers are undecided on whether they want to have a lower level API or a higher level API. And so I would be interested to see whether there's a kind of an overview on these network APIs. Um, well, like, uh, Arista, you have your, your, your uh, RDM uh, document, right? Yeah. Yes. I think this was not a generic function pointer versus switch case uh, discussion, but in this specific case, there was a set and get function uh, that expected a void pointer and did something with that, depending on an enum value. And this is replaced with a specific functions uh, that uh, are yeah, crafted for the specific operation you want to do. And what you gain is, for example, type safety in that point. And this is something that is security-wise uh, quite well. And the other point is that if you have some generic uh, get and set function, you never know if something is not implemented. And if you have a missing function pointer in, in a type, uh, in, in a struct, then, then you can just check for that quite easily. Uh, the, the API comment was actually in, uh... I moved on from the function pointer discussion because it's uh, it's more of a philosophical debate. Um, I know that some people like function pointers also. So <laughs> 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 could you suggest um, how to how to tackle this this problem? Because I mean, I fully agree that um, kind of standardizing um, APIs would be would be really great. I mean, would make life easier for all of us. Um, but from experience, how hard it is to converge on an API within one community um, seems to be difficult or close to impossible to um, to converge to a common API among different operating systems in different communities. Actually, what I wanted to say also is like first, uh, unfortunately, the radio API uh, was never defined by the 1504 standard. There are some definitions, for instance, for higher layer, like five layers uh, defined uh, before, uh, prior to the 2003 standard, uh, not 2006 standard, but it was dropped later. But the thing is, uh, how the radio should work is really not defined by the 1504 standard. So we see that different OSs approach different uh, strategies for this. Uh, so that's one thing first. I mean, it probably if there was a, a definition, it would be a matter of just implementing the API, but unfortunately it's not there. And second, uh, I think it's important to mention that this uh, discussion of function and switch cases, uh, basically it's up to the implementation because uh, the idea was to define an API, this RDM, actually trying to specify what were the needs for the network stack and what were the hardware capabilities of each device and the idea, even if we implement the same with switch cases or function pointers, there was an, an API designed uh, with some design considerations that are because they're in the RDM. Of course, it's still an experimental API, so I would expect to maybe uh, check or review and, and check if there are any stuff there. But, uh, but basically, there is an API that was defined by the community trying somehow to address uh, Whatever was needed. Yes. Yeah, so, so maybe to get back to the to the radio, uh, hell, um, I think uh, first of all, thank you a lot for, for tackling this because this will uh, make make a lot of things uh, much easier in the future. Also, it support for new radios. Um, us also, we now have a place to handle handle uh, stuff like these uh, different regions uh, because um, especially in the sub has that. Um, depending on which region of the world you are, you, you might only use certain channels or certain bands and certain uh, bandwidths. So this is also a place where you can put these kind of um, information and um, so, yeah, check the validity of, of configurations as that actually for configuration depending on the on the region of the world where the, the mode or the, 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 the node operates in. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's a big quick step forward. Also, also a place for encryption. So that's, uh, I also all, already saw someone post today regarding regarding that, um, so that's great. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. Any any more comments? Uh, so I couldn't read the discussion here in the because I have the presentation. But any more open comments regarding the current status before going to the next test? Okay, since uh, no. Yeah, but in any case, as I said, uh, the RDM is still open. So uh, even these uh, details like switch cases versus function pointers, we could still 
uh, define them. I mean, an API is merged, but still, like, no no component is using it that much yet. So we're still able to, to do some changes. I think it would be nice to also receive experience from other people. Although there were like seven people contributing to this, but of course seven is not enough, and there are always people that might get like a, a broader overview. So that would be nice. I just have to say, um, even with uh, the switch cases in NetApp, we still have function pointers also in NetApp. So. Yeah, yeah. So basically, so, yeah, yeah. So basically, what we can do it without function pointers. Yeah. Yeah. They don't think it would make the situation better. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, so basically, uh, after chapters, basically there are several things to be discussed. I think this is just some of the issues that have been opened in a, in a, in a riot. Uh, but of course, uh, there's a lot that could be done, and I think it would be nice to try to prioritize with the community, like uh, where should we focus uh, with, with this uh, whole regard the network stack. Um, so basically, uh, for instance, uh, yesterday we were talking about the lack of uh, 15.4 security, uh, which is, of course, we can always have a DTLS or kind of uh, security, but it might not be enough because this is not, uh, this doesn't protect against replay attacks or uh, also like sending uh, like malicious packets uh, in a malicious, like a mag layer commands. So, of course, security might. might might be important, but basically the discussion is like, uh, yeah, I didn't prioritize them here, and I think it's hard to talk about all these topics. But yeah, but they, hmm? might if I ask a, a clarifying question, um, like normally you're not just using the fifteen point four layer; you actually use a, a ton of other stuff on top of it, and they are, they are like you have the open thread uh, listed below, um, which is obviously came out of the. Of a consortium, um, and there are there's the CPIB and all sorts of other things. There's currently a new uh, standard activity with, uh, within the chip, um, um, also CP Alliance, mm -hmm. uh, and like there's so many solutions, security solutions. That the question is not that there is none, but more like which one do you want to use? Uh, you yeah. All of your own. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But for instance, uh, yeah, also there's different. Uh, I mean, there's security in different layers. But for instance, uh, in 15.04, the standards uh, has a whole section about frame security. Uh, that if implement that, we could already have a link layer encryption and uh, ways to authenticate the uh, nodes. Um, but but uh, the idea of the 15.04 is to you have it very minimalistic. Uh, and then some other organizations put then stuff on top of it so you can actually make it usable. The, the thing is that application layer uh, security doesn't protect you against like malicious border routers. You can just announce this malicious border router and all the nodes will replicate it and it's a DDoS network. So there, 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 there are so many open uh, attack vectors within a network stack below the application that having an open network is, is really something that, that is not, not safe to do. So it's like an unencrypted Wi-Fi we say. Just use HTTPS and you're safe. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that either. Um, I mean, it was a clarifying question, and I don't think that uh, the slide actually says that you take the security features from open thread and pop them on under IP or what. There are two points I to create and for security. Yes. And then there is a point where you yes. use uh, link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, uh, yeah. So this is, uh, I, I don't think it is meant to say that you want to use the no, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. It was just uh, to say that, I mean, uh, one way to go is basically uh, we have security. Uh, we probably want like low power features. One way to go is to decide to say, okay, we can implement, for instance, uh, fifteen dollar four Mac, and we can try to follow the standard and regarding like a uh, power efficiency and uh, layer encryption. But uh, we should also be aware that there are some. Uh, I mean, we could eventually reuse the link layer from open projects. Like uh, I think Francisco was working on uh, trying to expose the OpenWS and Max. So this could, for instance, could be like plugged directly into GRC, or we could simply uh, plug GNRC on top of the open thread lower layer. So basically, then we get thread support for for GNRC, and this would also reuse the. Um, 
we would reuse uh, basically like uh, just with implementation of open thread so that we don't have to care about implementing all these features uh, by ourselves. So that's why uh, I left it open. Did, uh, does that like uh, solve the, the confusion? That's what you were asking? I was just trying to get some more uh, input on what you were thinking in this direction. So thanks. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but uh, I mean, this is totally open. I mean, on one way, for instance, uh, I think we could really benefit if we try to reuse the, the link layer from from Earthstack. I mean, I think Thread is becoming quite uh, quite common nowadays, and uh, if you could just like plug GRC on top of Open Thread, I think uh, I think that we get all benefits of GRC, but also we are compatible with Thread network. Uh, yeah, but I, I think it would be nice to get some feedback here about. What do we think is uh, the way to go somehow with the uh, with the fifth format layer? Where should we focus? Uh, does it make sense? I think it would be nice to get some some feedback. For instance, do we need to implement our own uh, fifth format layer? Could we just uh, say, okay, open thread fulfill somehow all our or stuff, or maybe open the views and should be enough for instance for adding uh, teach. Uh, what do people think about it? Um, there are already two make layers uh, specific to major two that in the right master. They are both most or less scientific, but as far as I know, there are people that use it. Really? Yeah. Um, Go at back least back. I get questions from people that I don't know about these. Um, so, uh, at least those two, we should maybe think about uh, migrating to the new format. Yeah, I mean, basically, we could get the uh, support for Go Magage and Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah the two Magages and Go Magage and uh, LW Mac. Um, yeah, and uh, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't make this uh, big. Priority, major priority there. Mm. Uh, yeah, there are so many, there are so many uh, next steps you've listed there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but basically, should we focus on trying to implement our own 1504 Mac? No, that's what, what I wanted to say. So it should be done at some point uh, to try to migrate this, but it shouldn't be all major yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, for instance, like with Mac and, and OMAC, are implementations on top of 15.4. Uh, but what I mean is, like, should we try to implement the 15.4 standard defined by the uh, HRB? Yeah, I mean, it, maybe we find some shortcomings with that. Yeah, but may, maybe uh, I have the same impression. I mean, if we already port you know, GRC on top of Open Thread, then we get for free border routers and basically market available open ro uh, border routers. We already get uh, all kind of, uh, of encryption. Of course, of course, Open Thread is designed for uh, uh, basically for smart <laughs> open source. <laughs> Use it, open the Yeah, we both have the benefits. I mean, open the you will probably use it when you want the, I mean, high reliability or where you need low power plus um, when you have application with multi hub. Uh, open thread, you still have multi hub, but it's more designed for uh, inner spaces where you have a smart home, for instance, where you have some uh, battery power devices and some devices that could. Just simply use uh, electricity, like so. So basically, uh, where do we put the focus here? I mean, yeah, probably. I would say we could want to have both because they serve different uh, purposes. But I tend to think that maybe we should focus on trying to implement or, or to integrate the existing MAT layers before trying to uh, implement uh, security and indirect transmission by by ourselves because. If, for instance, we port open thread, we already get indirect transmission. Uh, this is uh, basically like a sleepy end device, could be always sleeping and just pull for packets to the lowest. Um, sorry, sorry, someone wants to look? No, oh, okay. Basically, you can pull packets if someone wants to uh, send a packet to a sleepy end device, just stay there for a queue and 
when the sleeping device wakes up, it can request to receive the packet. So this is very low power friendly. And also we'll get security for free. So do we agree that maybe we should focus on trying to integrate these uh, two stacks first? Yes, of course. I mean, we are open for it, especially there's a lot of inertia behind it uh, with, with Google and, and all the big companies that are using this uh, right now. Okay, so I think that sounds like a plan. Okay, so that's not, that's not, not good. Um, then a generic question because I was focusing a lot on 15.4. How is it, with, uh, for instance, if Hulk is there with the uh, Bluetooth Low Energy or how is it with other low layers? Like, do people have some comments here? Do we try? Should we try to follow a similar approach of having technology dependent stuff there? I think it's for, especially for BLE, it's, it's difficult. I mean, BLE you typically have pretty huge BLE stacks that you need to, to make it work in the first place. And of course, I mean, there's, for one, there's a very limited number of stacks. I mean, there's some vendor specific and the open source stacks, uh, you know, about two actually, one portable and one tied to Contiki. Um, they all have pretty specific um, interfaces, of course. Um, and all the, the radio and phi handling, that's all handled deep inside the stacks. So I don't think this is, needs to be covered by this topic so far. Um, as I see it, I mean, mostly, or as I implemented it, at least for, for Nimble, it's plugged directly into GNRC, uh, mapping the uh, VLE stack directly as a met if device. Um, and because there's also some, some address translation involved and, and some tables that the, the transition layer needs to keep it's pretty specific stuff, so I wouldn't I wouldn't handle this with this uh, lower layer interfaces here. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, okay, also another topic that always pops up, and I think also some people were asking yesterday is like, how do we deal with uh, leak layer data? It's like, how I mean, what's the standard procedure now to send, for instance, uh, Ethernet frames or 15.4 frames? Uh, I think someone was asking yesterday in one of the presentations uh, if we have direct access to these things. We currently uh, only have some, I mean, we have NetDepth for accessing the specific uh, file layers, but we don't have something that could say, hey, I want to send this packet to this specific link layer address. I and mean, then we have, for instance, the TXT send command. But this pattern seems to be repeated in, I mean, we have several implementations of TXT send command, and sometimes we want to send the link layer data. But the question is like, do you think we need an interface for sending link layer data? How, how should we proceed with this? Uh, do like, for instance, uh, applications that uh, handle UDP or IP data, do they also require in certain cases access to link layer like Ethernet? Uh, what's your opinion about it? I'm pretty sure this was a topic and <laughs> no <man. laughs> hmm. So no one wants to send link layer data. No one nobody wants to send link layer data. Uh, um, hello. Yeah. So um I I remember we were once talking about um sending link layer data as a part of the research being done, where you're just experimenting with different link layer implementations. So from a, a user standpoint where you're just uh, trying to send Ethernet frames or 15.4 frames, uh, it's actually uh, kind of redundant where you have to learn about how to send Ethernet frames instead of like, you have to construct the whole packet and then send it to the uh, link layer using the GNRC Net API thing. Mm. So I would, I would like if there is some such inter interface. So basically, just an interface to pass uh, the full uh, network uh, frame, L3 frame, and maybe a generic uh, link uh, link address. You think that could be useful? Um, and like my concern is more like uh, you should not uh, have to construct a packet on your own. You just have a function which, uh, like, in somehow ha accepts. Uh, tell which layer packet you want to construct and it constructs the packet accordingly. Mm. 
Yeah. So you say that I want to send a, a, a Ethernet frame, so it'll construct a packet with the Ethernet frame, uh, like header details, uh, and you just send the uh, byte stream of data which you want to send it. Yeah. So this speaks for an user interface. Yeah. Basically, you just pass data and yeah. you say, "Hey, this is a generic uh, uh, like link address. Do you want to send?" Okay. So yeah, good to know. This was not clear, but so basically, it's probably one of the ways to go. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, next question, which I think is a problem we have been carrying for some years, is regarding uh, the way we interact network stacks. Uh, basically, we have uh, each network stack has to take care of uh, allocating all structures. Each device descriptor uh, has to also take care of uh, basically processing IRQ events. Uh, in practice, what happens is like we have a lot of duplicated code between different network stacks because each network stack has to care about. Uh, and uh, processing, uh, also as an init function, is also like specific to network stack. So, uh, yeah, basically, uh, do you think it would try to make sense to unify this, for instance, instead of have one auto init per network stack that tries to uh, each one allocate all radios, initialize them, and give too much responsibility to the network stack? Maybe try to unify this in a way that uh, the network stack doesn't care about IRQ handling. And then uh, basically the only thing the network stack had to do is to implement the callbacks from, from lower layers and then uh, basically we use a, a lot of code. What are your thoughts about that? Actually, specifically, uh, we currently have some mechanism for do uh, ISR offloading. Uh, for instance, uh, we're trying to use event loops now, this event handler structure where each time there's an, uh, an, an interrupt, we set a thread flags and that basically process an event loop. The thing is like, should we try, for instance, try to make this mandatory so basically all uh, radios uh, are configured to uh, use uh, an uh, event, uh, event structure? So basically, then we leave that uh, responsibility to the S and not of the network stack. What are your thoughts about it? I don't know if I mean, uh, the point was so clear to be honest. Yeah, basically, it's like, could we assume that the OS takes care of IRQ handling and then for the network stack integration, they don't have to care about who processes IRQ? So basically, we could just reuse, for instance, we assume that all radios are implemented uh, in the kernel, that the IRQ is just handled by the kernel, and then basically, network stacks only need to subscribe to events of. Uh, of the radius, which is not what we have now, because now each network stack has to take care of processing uh, the IRQ handler, and basically, in most texts, the, the code for processing is the same, but then we still have to re-implement each time we want to have events. It would be okay to say, for instance, that all, I mean, we, we implement uh, the auto init in a way that all drivers use thread flags, for instance, for, for processing, or do we think it's important that each network stack uh, handles IRQ? I think it's important that the network stack handle their IRQ. I don't think it's a good idea to dictate the IPC mechanism for all of them, because it's highly dependent on, on how the stack is also structured in the inside. I mean, imagine a stack that completely works on events and you force it to use thread flags for this. Uh, yeah, but, but the question is more like, I mean, for instance, uh, you can always define the, me the method you want to use for processing IRQ, uh, but you can still make it generic. For instance, if you have two, uh, two network stacks that require to use event loops, then you only need one bootstrap code that tells you which is the queue where you want to process events. And then you don't have to copy each time uh, all the code, uh, all the bootstrap code. Or for instance, if you have a specific use case where you are aware that you want to run your whole network stack on IRQ context, you could still, for instance, think about a compile time flag that uh, enables you to do so, but then you don't have to implement each time you want to process IRQ with messages or each uh, time. I, I see. You mean to to allow for different means of of synchronization or IRQ handling, and just to move the implementation side of it to some yeah. generic place. So have like <laughs> one generic implementation for thread flags, one generic implementation maybe for event handling, and one for exactly. messaging. Exactly. Uh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Okay, so 
Is it a consensus here? Okay. I call it a consensus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, we're really close to the, I think, to the, yeah, we have all three minutes, but a quick question. Like, I think that this topic came up before, but basically for GNRC, we have one stack per network interface. Uh, which consumes a lot of RAM. There are some use cases where this could be desirable. For instance, if we are using DMA for for uh, for, for copying the frame buffer, uh, in certain cases it would be desirable to have one thread uh, lock while other or interfaces can still like read packets. But what are your thoughts here? Uh, sometimes like allocating one network interface per network stack is, could be a lot for shared applications. So, what are your thoughts about this? I think as long as we allow the network stack to make the choice and don't dictate this uh, with the interface, uh, we're in a good place. So I think each network stack has its own focus and it could be that for one network stack it makes uh, sense to allocate one thread stack uh, per, per network interface and for the other it doesn't. Uh, and as long as we allow for both, uh, we should be fine. But for instance, for the case of GNRC, uh, do, do you think we it, it could make sense to try to uh, also implement the network interface in a way that they only share one thread? Actually, I think that this is not really the design goal of GNRC. In, in my opinion, the design goal of GNRC is to be flexible and to be generic uh, and not to be uh, most efficient about RAM. If, if you want GNRC to be more efficient about RAM, uh, there would be a lot of design decisions that would end up differently than they are. And I think it doesn't make sense to not GNRC in a direction it was not intended to be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree. Yeah, for, for, some, for some design changes, you actually could make it run uh, more RAM efficient, but yeah, those are... Um, was that actually uh, a, um, uh, a, a plus story? <laughs> they haven't implemented yet. So, uh, for example, if you use uh, if, if you use um, some um, similar structures like LWRP or Rhyme, you you could use to implement this theory in GMSD, but it isn't implemented. Um, so then, then you could use basically GMSD in one step, but mm. um, but yeah, as uh, Maria said, that wasn't the design goal. Um, yeah. Okay. I, 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 I think both, uh, both arguments have. Okay, but I think it's good to receive this feedback. Uh, there was an issue open, I think, for eight months, and I think just in an hour of a breakout session, <laughs> like, <laughs> we could get uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of feedback. Uh, yeah, basically, I mean, we are. And now it's 10 o'clock, so I think we should be closing. Uh, there was an extra topic about frame buffers. There's zero copy. In some cases, uh, we have detected there. It could be an overhead uh, of doing it. When you have really small packets, there could be an overhead of zero copy. Uh, and basically, uh, I wanted to talk about the problem, but I think we can do that in an issue, basically show uh, measurement, and then try to decide something about this topic, because otherwise we, we might extend it. Uh, too much. So I think maybe we have time for one last thing. Gilles Ofer raised his hand. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, is, is he not here? Yeah. In the right top there? I know he just just moved to the top and see the hands in there, but yeah. he's not saying anything. Okay, so okay. then we probably close here. Yeah, we're probably close. Uh, Okay, thank you so much. I think uh, a lot of uh, questions about next steps uh, are a little bit more clear now. Uh, I think it would be important like, to summarize this. Probably I will try to send an email uh, as soon as possible to summarize all these topics here. But uh, really, thank you so much for attending. And thank you for all the effort and the presentation. Oh, thank you. So, uh, see you in the next uh, breakout sessions, I guess. See you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, so, so I mean, possibility of having uh, uh, 
this this multi multi core CPU is everything. Oh shit! I'm... So this. Uh,